so the Trailblazers do take Scoot Henderson, who fell to three. There was some question in recent days as to whether he or Miller would go sec, you know, who would go two, who would go three. But in the end, it wound up the way people assumed it would go, you know, for weeks and weeks. Scoot Henderson, three overall, and two, the Portland Trailblazers. Now, it seems to me at this point, Jay, it's pretty cut and dried for Portland. You Either they believe Scoot Henderson is a potential franchise player, right? Cut and dried, huh? Cut and dried? Or yeah. cut and dry? Cut and dried. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Got it. Yeah. I-E-D. Yeah. 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 Got it. So, so <laughs> either they believe he is really going to be a franchise player, right? And that the shooting will come along and all that stuff. And they can build around him. And if, that, if that's the case, then you move Dame now. It's the right thing to do for your organization and for Dame. Or you believe that... I don't know about the shooting, and we can get a lot for him. Lillard deserves to be surrounded. You know, we're not going to break in these young players. We're going to go get him an all-star. And you go do that and try to win a championship. Seems to me that it's either or. You can't do, you can't, I don't see them not make it, you know, you're not going to do both. Well, Portland tried last night. I mean, they tried to package Anthony Simon and the third pick, which was going to be Scoot Henderson right. to Brooklyn for Mikel Bridges, and Brooklyn turned down the deal, right? They turned down the deal. So when you're, when you're making a, an attempt like that, how do you not take Scoot Henderson? And it just seems like Joe Cronin and company, if you can't find a package of those two players for a high-level caliber player and draft collateral, then go towards a rebuild and just do the I – mean, look, I can't tell you last night sitting there watching the draft – I'm also all over Twitter's timeline, like, wondering if Dame is going to post some picture. Like, I, I know he's over in, in France right now. I know he's on vacation with his family. The entire league is paying attention to this gap of time that between the draft and the beginning of free agency, you have teams and GMs that are putting together the best construction of pieces of assets to attack and try to get Dame Lillard. Like, that's where everybody's at. Because it's just it's a matter of time. Like, what's going to happen? Like, something is going to break. Either you're going to go towards a rebuild or you're going to put together a package of assets to try to get another high-level caliber player to entice Dame to stay. But I don't think – I don't know what player is out there that you can make a move for that another team is willing to let you poach to keep Dame in Portland. Looking at their roster now – do you think that, I mean, they do have some interesting young pieces in Portland, but the question is, like, none of them really look like franchise players. The funny thing is, though, they, do, they all do certain things at a really high level. You know, either this guy's really athletic or, ooh, that's just what a lot of teams are looking for. If you trade Lillard, do you get enough back, given this core, and do you believe in Scoot Henderson's future enough that you think that could eventually build to a champion? Who do you think has more value, Damian Lillard or Bradley Bill? Damian Lillard. Okay. Yeah. And Bradley Bill had what? A no-trade clause. Yeah, and, and a look, big contract. And a big contract. And look what Washington – well, Dame has a big contract too. But look and he missed a lot of games recently. Beal. Look what Washington got for Bradley Bill. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about last year, Rudy Gobert and company. Like, look at those deals – that were last year, I think Dame could land you a massive deal. Now, granted, you're trying to do the right move by Dame by giving him, you know, three or four teams that he can choose from by saying, hey, this is where I would like to be. But you're, you're telling me, like, Brooklyn wouldn't give up a ton of assets for Damian. You would get an unprecedented type of deal. Do you think Lillard and Bridges are enough as the two best players on your team that you that's surrounded with the right pieces they can win a championship? I think you're moving towards that. I'm not saying it's going to lend you. It, it, it doesn't put you in pole position right away as it would with Miami. Mm. But That's what I'm saying from Lillard's point of view. I guess you could but, argue. But it's also about what the plan is, right? So for, it, it's for not, it, it, it's Well, for Dame. Like, for me, if I were Dame, I wouldn't be just doing, like, I need to be traded to a contender. Like, a contender could be, hey, if – if you are a, if I do say hey, here are the three teams and you do extract the most value that you give in return, but you still leave your window open to make other moves and there is a strategy in place to pick up two or three additional pieces, like maybe one other star and some great fit role pieces. Like if Sean Marks has a strategy like that, I need to hear what that strategy let's, is. Let's look at it from Lillard's point of view for a second. 
if, if from Lillard's point of view, it seems to me that what it comes down to is this. Am I better off simply improving my chances to win a championship, even knowing that I didn't give myself a top three chance, let's say, in the league, but I've improved it. I'm better off in Brooklyn with Mikhail Bridges and whomever else than I am in Portland right now. Is that improvement in his odds of winning a championship? In other words, it's not Miami where you go, ooh, I bet you we chip up if I go there. But it's better than Portland. Is that worth spending the equity you have as a as a franchise player who was loyal to the franchise, who has this whole thing built up around him, around that. Like, once you shoot your shot, you got to hit it if you're Lillard, it seems to me. I don't know that it's worth it simply to give myself a slightly better chance somewhere else. Let me ask you this, and it just came to my mind. Mm -hmm. If you were Dame and you're watching a guy like Giannis play, Mm -hmm. and you're watching Chris Middleton opt out of his deal, and you're watching Drew Holiday Right, and Brooke Lopez, who's probably he's gonna be a restricted free agent, right? Would you wanna go play in, in Milwaukee with Giannis? Mm-hmm. Like, okay. I would. Hey, Milwaukee. Yep. Like that it was, that's some, it's gonna be an arms race. You're gonna have teams. Would you wanna go play in Philadelphia? Yep. Like if Philly's worried so much about James Harden and some assets, like, are you not willing if you're Philadelphia and Daryl Morey to say, I'm gonna put Joel Embiid and Dame Lillard together in the East? Like, you're telling me them in the East, you're looking at Boston making moves with Kristaps Porzingis. Like, I'm looking at Philly saying, I want to play with Joel Embiid, or I want to like, I want to play with the Giannis, or I want to play in my like, – I'm looking the at these teams right here, the top teams in the East. You all need me. Yeah. I mean, it just – I was shocked yesterday by that. I was shocked. First of all, I was shocked to learn once the deal finally got finalized between Washington and Phoenix – how many picks Michael Winger actually got, mm-hmm. right, for Washington. You look through the, I mean, 2024 seconds, 2025, 2026, 2027. Pick swaps, 2028. I mean, 2024, 2026, it's 2030. Like, oh, cha- it's goodness. a type of trade that could change the rules in the next CBA, yes. right? Yeah. So I stand corrected, Washington Wizard fans, because I thought it was malpractice when I didn't understand how many picks – they actually got in exchange for Bradley Bill. Yeah. Like, so props to Washington. Who was a distressed Fresh- asset with uh, a no trade clause and an enormous contract and who's missed a lot of time in the last three seasons. So Washington Wizard fans, I stand corrected on that. But no way in hell did I think I would see CP3 get traded to the, get traded to the Golden State Warriors. I still don't believe it to be true, Max. Mm. Like, I stand on my principles. Like, last night when I saw it, I'm like, okay, you unloaded – Jordan Poole, there were issues there. His contract, four years, $130 million. You unloaded that with the second apron. Like, like there are going to be major tax implications for teams that are over the luxury tax. Okay, I I get that move from Michael Dunleavy Jr. Now you bring on CP3, but it doesn't feel like it's finished yet to me. Mm -hmm. It feels like they're bringing on CP3. Are they going to waive him? You're then going to re-sign Draymond Green? Are you still looking for additional pieces? I hear a lot of my people over in Cannes right now for the Sports Beach Summit, right? There's a lot of advertising things going over in Cannes. You see LeBron James in Cannes. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of speculation around Draymond Green and Dame Lillard spending a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. Do Do I feel some trading going on there between Draymond and Dame? It cannot be possible for Golden State, or is this a finished package with CP3 wait, wait. and Steph Curry? You're I'm floating it out there. Wait, hold on. Let me I am understand. floating it out there. You're suggesting that Draymond and, and Dame play together somewhere or are involved in a trade for each other as principals. I don't know what I'm suggesting. All I'm saying is if those two are spending some time together, could that be used as a package deal? Like – Could people be thrown off yesterday thinking that it's only CP3 and him still being waived to go to L.A., them still trying to find some cap space with Dre to go get a guy like Dame? If I I don't know. I'm I'm just throwing it out there. Put Dame in the same backcourt with Steph. I mean, CP3 can work with the second unit, and I'm not saying CP3 can't work. CP3 has proven that he could work playing in a system built around guards and spacing. He did that in Houston. But it does feel like that's a really small backcourt. Are you going to close with – 
Are you, is CP3 just coming off the bench? Is he a bona fide guy coming off the bench I now? I was thinking that's You're not going to close with Steph and CP3? I, always, I know what you mean about who's going to open, who's going to close, but I always think about it in terms of minutes. Like in the backcourt, right? You got 96 minutes. You could even add one of the forward positions nowadays, but you got 48 plus 48. If you have three really good players, there's your rotation. You can you can eat up those thirty those, those ninety six minutes between three players, and they're all getting right around thirty minutes. You know, a game. That's some of them a little more, some of them a little less, but that could work. Max, I, I stand on it. I don't like the move. I don't like it. Mm. it it's as of right now. Well, where Grant, are they in the West? They, they, uh, well, hold on. Before we even get to where they are in the West, I know the situation happened with Jordan Poole last year, right? I know that they couldn't bounce back, and I think a lot of that is on Jordan Poole, who now finds himself in Washington in a rebuild. Championship contender to a rebuild, yeah. right? So I think it's a great sign or lesson for young players. You'll learn to work through things. Mm -hmm. You asked for it, you got your money, but now you're in a rebuild. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it does feel like you're losing a legit eye-popping score. That is one of the main reasons you won a chip last year. Two years ago, yeah. Two years. Well, yeah. last year. No, two seasons ago. All right, yeah. two seasons ago now. But, like, one of the main reasons you want to chip, Max. Yeah. So now you lose that, and you're filling in that gap. And I love CP3. First ballot Hall of Famer he's going to be. But a guy who's been injury prone late in his career, multiple times down the stretch when you need him the most, who's turning 39 years old, who now you're going to put him in a system in which there's constant movement. And constant continuity. But again, as you said, it increases be, the odds of injury for he me. He could be on the move. Getting back to Jordan Poole, though, you could stand on principle. That's fine. Maybe Jordan Poole should have worked through it. Maybe Draymond, whatever it is, it wasn't working. Like they, it ruined. It didn't their work season. for one year. I understand. And, and, you just wanted the year prior. A, he has an enormous contract, considering the new CBA and how that punishes teams that spend that money. You got to hang on to Steph. They, you know. <laughs> You're going to pay. It looks like you want to pay Dre, right? You're going to work something out. What's going to happen with Clay? You've paid Wiggins. There's, you know, there's only so much money to go around, and and this is a way to get him off your books, fix the chemistry, and and you know try to re-sign the guys you really want. I get it. I get it from their point of view to move him. The question is what they got in return. Is that, as you said, simply a a, a way to dump salary, or do they plan on using Chris Paul? I, that's what I, I think. That's the million dollar question everybody's waiting to find out. I do not believe that they are done. They can't be done. Because What's the my, starting my, they, five you, right you, now is the question. What's so the starting you, five? you still have Clay, whose his contract is up after this year. Yep. And, and his trying defense to work. wasn't the same since the injury. A great. Well, right. I mean, back to back injuries, yep. obviously yep. on a knee and an Achilles, right? Yeah, two years. But you, you, he did have a good offensive season mm -hmm. last year. Didn't show up that great in the playoffs, but still, are you going to give him a super max? No, like or, as you or, mentioned, or, or, if, or Max deal. That's why it's hard to figure Chris Paul because at this stage in his career, he doesn't have defensive value. Steph plays defense as well as he can, but he's not really a defender. And and now Clay being diminished defensively, you're relying on Andrew Wiggins to do all the work. So we're just you know obviously talking NBA draft before we even get to Wembanyama. What what what's your biggest takeaway? I liked what Dallas did. I really did. I thought they made an effort. Um, to go out and get two defensive players and Omax Prosper from Marquette, um, Derek Lively from Duke. I mean, this is a team that ranked in the bottom for field goal percentage at the rim, um, needed a paint, uh, paint protector. They get uh, Lively. They went out and got Rashawn Holmes, um, who didn't play in the Sacramento series, but they get another center. Um, they move off the Burton's money. Um, so I, I actually, I liked, I liked what the Mavericks did last night. So, essentially, you can make the case that them tanking at the end of the season helped them. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I thought I, – I was – I said yeah. – and I was – listen, from a front office perspective, <laughs> I was all in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> from, from a fan perspective, that – like, considering what you owed New York, you know, with that pick, and they had boxed themselves in such a corner, um, you know, how they build the roster, they – yes, for what they did – uh, paid off for that. Yeah. So I, I, I thought last night, obviously with the top three picks, it was good to see the Thompson twins go back to back too. Um, but it kind of went according to the way I thought it was going to go with Brandon Miller going to Charlotte. You know, MJ's last pick, obviously, as an owner for the Charlotte Hornets. And then Scoot Henderson going three to Portland. Joe Cronin, the general manager there, has 
some big time decisions to make, right? Uh, obviously, we were talking about this before we came on air. The package deal of Anthony Simon and Scoot Henderson, or the third pick, got turned down by the Brooklyn Nets for a guy like Mikel Bridges. If you were Joe Cronin, Bobby, what do you do? What I would do is, and I, I heard the press conference last night, I would say to Damian Lillard, this is who we are. We're going to go out and resign Jeremy Grant. We're going to bring back Matisse Dybul. Right now, there's no nothing on the table trade-wise. And we've got Shaden Sharp, and we've and I actually I liked what Portland did last night. You know, you know, Scoot, you took the best available. Chris Murray, Keegan's brother, yeah, play yeah. win now. Uh, Ryan Rupar from France, who had a first round grade. Like they got three good players here. But I'm uh, but I'm saying that to Damian Lillard, like this is who we are. Like, but are doesn't you, that mean? Isn't it an either or? Do you believe in Scoot as a maybe potential franchise? Will he shoot it well no. enough eventually? And now you got to flip Dame, right? Or you have to look for a trade partner with Scoot. You're going to do both. You're going to try to win a championship with this crew. Well, that's where it comes down to. And I don't know if it's much that Joe Cronin has a decision. I think it's Damian Lillard yeah. has a decision. Like I, I've said all along, like Joe Cronin's not going to go into the office today and start calling teams looking for trade suitors. He will if Damian Lillard w- walks in this morning and says, like, this is like, this is. I don't see the path. I don't see how we are going to compete with Denver and. Um, Phoenix and Golden State and some of these other teams because at the end of the day, unless Shaden Sharp takes a big jump and you get a real impact from these these young players, they're still a team that will fight probably for it to get into the play-in. Well, Bobby, I mean, Dame is on the record pretty much saying if we are going to go through a rebuild, then I don't want to be here. I mean, pretty much, right? So, but I, I'm with you. Like, if I'm Joe, I'm like, okay, you have to tell me. Like, I'm just not going to give you up if you're not demanding to be give, given up. No, that's right. I mean, even if he does, I mean, you almost are, are like in a Kevin Durant situation from last year where yeah. you're not just, just because he comes in and does it doesn't mean you're just getting rid of, um, you know, getting, you know, getting rid of him. And I think you're looking probably for the tr- best trade packages out there. Fortunately for Portland, there is no, tr- no trade clause. This isn't Bradley Beal. But at the other end, a guy who's been there 12 years, you're not going to ship him to somewhere unless, like, man, what happens if you get a sweetheart deal of, like, just, like, four unprotected ones and it's not from Brooklyn or Miami or one of these other teams? Then that's a decision that front office and that ownership group is going to have to make. Thank you, Bobby. Hold on, Max. Thank you, Bobby. But, but who's going to give argue, him that if he doesn't want to be there? See, we argued about this all day yesterday. And I told him, I was like, hey, look, you got to give me a list of teams that you potentially want to go to. But at the end of the day... Like, I'm just not going to send you to where you want to go. I have to get fair or better trade compensation okay, in return this, for you. Watch this. I'm going to hire someone like Bobby Marks as my agent. And if I'm Damian Lillard and he has an agent, and he's going to pick up the phone to whatever team is offering the four unprotected ones and say he's not. he doesn't want to go there. And guess what's going to happen to the four? They're not going to make the offer. Who's going to give that up for a disgruntled superstar, Bobby? No, no that's a, it's, you're, it's a fair point. I think you know certainly the length of the contract dictates a lot, too. <laughs> if, if he was gone and expiring or one year left, he just signed that extension last offseason. He's got – Four years four left. Four years. Four years. Sixty-one million in that last year. He's thirty. He's not turned down that money. Thirty-eight. That's, that's a he's big. That's that a big money. number. But Dam- yeah, but true. Damian, he's smart. I mean, he made a good point. He said, you know, based on what's what's on the other side besides Portland, isn't isn't always going to be great. Yep. Like mm-hmm. considering that what you have to give up probably to to get him. It's not the Bradley Beal situation where you're giving up six second round picks and you still have DeAndre eight and you can just slide in there. All right. That's that's the whole thing. If you're going to take that shot, if you're going to spend the equity you've built up as this guy who was loyal to the soil, right? And you're Damian Lillard, you're not going to do that just to marginally improve your chances. You're going to take your swing and say, I can win a championship there. And otherwise, I don't think he asks for it, right? So this requires some kind of uh, backroom talking and negotiating and, and kind of testing the waters first. And if he's being quiet right now, that makes me think he's not hearing what he wants so far. I yeah, guess it is what it is. Speaking of winning a championship, CP3 got traded yesterday to the Golden State Warriors. Washington received Jordan Poole, Ryan Rollins, uh, a protected 2030 first round pick and a 2027 second round pick. What do you think about the move for Golden State? Does this get them closer to a championship or make them further removed? I, I didn't I didn't love it. I mean, it didn't Same. wow me. Um, I just look at Chris Paul at this stage. I think likely he probably comes off the bench. Um, you know, maybe playing 25 minutes here. I thought Jordan Poole, I know, you know, everyone was down on him, but if you're going to flip him, maybe for some, maybe multiple players, you know, maybe balance out your bench a little more. Um, I thought it was more, 
I thought it was more of a financial decision based on getting rid of Pools years three and four, and I think that probably helps mm. when it comes to Draymond. Probably helps when it comes to Clay Thompson, who's extension eligible. Um, so I, I didn't. I mean, they, and they traded their two uh, picks they drafted last year, also. <laughs> so I, 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 I didn't love it. I think it would have been interesting if this new collective bargaining wasn't coming in. Would they still have made that trade? Yeah. Well, do you think that they keep him or let him go now? No, I think his contract's guaranteed fully this year. So um, I think that's the decision. Next year, it's non-guaranteed. Thirty million would come off your books. Um, mm. 